East Kentucky Tournament Trail. Brought to you by Heritage Pharmacy, Days Boat Sales, The Fish and Hole at Phillips Heat and Park. Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? There you go. Thank you. Okay, so welcome to the East Kentucky Tournament Trail Podcast. My name is Jason Kenner. I'm your host. You know, we started this podcast a few weeks ago and, and you know, fishing has grown, in my opinion, in 2020 uh, as much as any year in my life. And, you know, that's what this is. It's just an effort uh, to continue to grow the sport in our area. You know, I know uh, you guys know me. I'm an educator by trade. I've seen more young guys uh, with Instagram posts and, and stuff on social media and, you know, talking fishing. I got this little young cat. His name's uh, Luke Tackett. You know, I, I spent some time in the cafeteria with me, you know, and Luke will send me a message every now and then. He sent me one a couple of weeks ago. I throw those duck at rods and he says, uh, he says, coach, he said, uh, well, that duck at rod, if I'm boat flipping a six pounder and take it, guys, this guy, this kid's like nine years old. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, if I'm boat flipping a six pounder with this rod, hold up. And I just, you know, I just love that stuff. So, yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, that, that's what this is about is, is just an effort to uh, continue to grow our sport. Uh, tonight, t tonight, our sponsor is team no fish tackle. Uh, Ronnie Stanford Jr. hooked us up with a, a great package of jigs. Uh, he's right here local uh, in East Kentucky. He's doing some legitimate work. That's a really popular chatterbait color you guys all know. Uh, I'll show you one more of those. Uh, just another jig he put in there, but it's a nice little box, you know, just like what you get from Tackle Warehouse or anywhere else. And uh, to be entered in that giveaway tonight, tag two friends in the, in the comments and share this post. That's all you're going to need to do. So real quick, we're going to bounce around the room and, and just hit some introductions. Uh, we got a special guest tonight, and we're really excited to have him. Uh, Doug, why don't you start us off? Okay, my name's Doug Green, and uh, I'm from McGoffin County, Kentucky. Been fishing the East Kentucky Trail, I guess, since it started. And uh, I am the agency manager over here for Kentucky Farm Bureau in McGoffin County. Uh, been fishing, uh, tournament fishing, for about 35 years. So... Uh, Fish a lot. I actually just rolled in uh, within minutes from Chickamauga from a tournament. So that's awesome. Great to get the year started. And my guy, Mike Jervis, you know, it's weird. We live in this COVID uh, madness of 2020, 2021. I could literally throw a rock and probably hit his truck right now across the road, <laughs> but you know, the, the Zoom madness. So here we are. But anyway, Mike, go ahead and Jervis, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name's Michael Jervis. Uh, I am the real estate manager for a billboard company here called Fairway Outdoor Advertising. I've uh, been fishing, golly, uh, ever since probably I was six, seven years old. Mom and dad used to drag me out in the early 80s uh, to Watts Bar, to Cumberland, to Nickajack, to Fort Loudon. I mean, up and down uh, the Tennessee River chain. And still haven't cashed a check on <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, I love doing what I'm doing uh, with my mother. My mom, as everybody knows, that is my, uh, uh, my go-to. So um, very fortunate, very fortunate. And, and, and she's awesome. I mean, she is awesome. She, she can fish with the best of them. Uh, she can, she, absolutely. She, she's as tough as they get. It doesn't matter if it's cold, if it's raining. You know, it don't matter. She's in. there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it's great. She's getting ready to turn 70 this year. That's and cool. uh, she's already got all of her uh, uh, tournament scheduled, uh, all of the monies, um, uh, like for the casting for kids. You know, we tried to be the first one uh, all the way down the line. She's uh, she's ready. She's a gamer. She's one so, of the big She's one of the biggest competitors I've ever met. Oh, yeah. Fishing. 
I mean, serious. Yeah. Hates to lose. I know it's always hey, your fault, though, right? It's always my fault. And the majority, <laughs> majority of the time, it really is my fault. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was three times last uh, last year that uh, she had a uh, – I ain't going to say it was the winning fish, but it was uh, enough to cash a check. But I go down with the dip net, and I am – terrible using a dip net you know my motto is just the boat flip it and uh so i tell her to boat flip it she says it's too big to boat flip and i said all right so i get the net and i try to reach down there and scoop it up and i always end up hitting the fish right on top of the head <laughs> and there it goes i mean <laughs> yeah so that's what but, keeps coming back though right it does absolutely it's uh you know it's um, just like I tell her and she tells me, she says, you know, it's not about the winning part. The winning part is being out there with your friends and it's a family yeah. and th that's what we got. That's what the fishing community is. Yeah. It's one big family. And cause everybody's got each other's back. Yeah. I um, I mean, we really do. So, um, yeah, just very fortunate. So, so, so lastly, you know, uh, let, let Mike introduce himself. We're stoked to have you, Mike. I know you're busy preparing for your season. Uh, yeah. just can't appreciate you enough and, and tell you how much we appreciate you hopping on, spend some time with some good old boys from Michigan, Kentucky to talk fishing. I'm glad to do it. Thanks for having me again. I'm, uh, I'm Mike Huff, fish on the Bassmaster Elite Series. It's my third season and, uh, really looking forward to it. I'm, uh, Took some lumps over the past two years, but I'm looking forward to getting back out there. Uh, we leave here in a week, so it's exciting. Absolutely. I know, you know, I, I follow you on social media. Uh, you know, the one thing that I'm going to give you a ton of credit for, you know, uh, I feel like you really respond and react to your fans, you know, uh, and, and I think that's cool, man. You know, like for me, just being an average Joe, you know, and, and I like your story or whatever, you know, and we'll interact a little bit like I, I'm just saying, I, I think that really helps you build your brand, and I think you've done a great job in that way. Well, I, I appreciate that. My my granddad always used to say, and my dad, you know, you're you're just as good as everybody, but you're better than nobody. I mean, you, you always want to interact with everybody. You want and I, and I always take the time to do that because I, I wanted people to interact with me when I was trying to make it, you know. So right. that, that's really important to me. Well, I, I'm telling you, you do an incredible job in that way. So what I wanted to start with, uh, guys, you know, uh, how did you start fishing? What advice would you give uh, for somebody, you know, my, my young guy, Luke Tackett? Let's say he wants to get into tournament fishing and, and bass fishing. You know, what, what advice uh, could, could you give one of those guys? Doug? Well, I started bass fishing, and, and these local people around here will know. Uh, I started bass fishing probably at the age of 14, uh, when a great friend of mine, and y'all know him, T. Watkins, yep. and, a, and another good friend who has passed on was Shorty Copley. Um, they, they started Bassin' Buddies, if you remember that, that yep. group. I was probably one of the youngest members that got to fish and started Bassin' Buddies back in the day, which was a very big group of people, uh, a bunch of good people. And uh, when it started... They would come and uh, pick me up at my driveway, and I'd carry my fishing rods and my tackle down and jump in the truck with one of them, and off I'd go in the middle of the night or middle of the morning, actually, and go off to Cumberland and, and uh, Del Hollow and Woods Creek Lake, um, have some fond memories of there with that bunch. But it was a bunch of the old guys that's, that fished, and some have passed on now. But it was a great tournament bunch, and and I'm not real sure. I was kind of when when you mentioned this, I was kind of thinking about it, um, and wondering if those got you know I know T, we still talk to T all of us, but uh, I was wondering if if Bass and Buddies is still going. I'm not real sure, but it was one of the oldest bass clubs in in Eastern Kentucky there for years, and that's. You know, I got started naturally pond fishing around with my parents, but but uh, as far as tournament fishing, that's what got me started. And then I went on and felt like uh, T had talked to me about going as a no boater into the uh, back in the day the Red Man, 
which is now the MLF Big Five or whatever, was uh, uh, FLW. But I went and uh, fished a couple years as a co-angler and uh, been fishing about 34 years now as a boater. So that's, awesome. uh, that's how I got started. T's been posting all those pictures from Florida this week and last week. Yeah. I've seen that. He's killing, <laughs> yeah. He's killing I'm it. Jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Jervis, how'd you get started? Well, tournament fishing, um, probably, well, me and mom and dad, you know, we always used to go to South Carolina, Lake Murray. Um, got family that lives down there. And uh, I would spend my summers down on Lake Murray. And mom and dad naturally had to work back home here. But I would take my uncle's boat. Uh, he had an old 87 Challenger. And I would take it out every day, every day for about two months. And I got to, uh, I got to, I guess, hone my skills on throwing a jig and throwing a big worm and throwing a spinnerbait. And I remember coming back, it was probably 90 or 91. I was probably 14, 15 years old. There was the ABA tournaments. They were, they were big. Doug was fishing them. Um, uh, Greg Bryan, a bunch of the guys was fishing them back here. And um, it was down on Taylorsville. It was my first tournament. And my uncle Tim, Tim Miller, he said uh, he always fished with Roger Maynard. And Roger couldn't fish. And uh, he said, hey, would you care uh, to get permission if, if your mom and dad would let you fish the ABA tournament trail? He said, would you care to go down there and fish with me on Taylorsville? I said, I, I would love to. <laughs> and uh i remember we left out on a friday morning we went down there and pre-fish tournament was on a saturday and i man i mean it just that was the first tournament that i've ever fished and it just got my blood yeah. it was just it was from everything of uh the blast off to the eight hours of fishing yep. to what the fish in it was the best uh feeling that that a you know a teenager could ever have Excellent. and uh yeah i mean so i come back here and i man i just thought you know i i was i was gonna wipe everybody's <laughs> butt on those thursday night tournaments and i remember dad uh, me and him we used to fish those thursday night tournaments and doug absolutely was uh, he still is, but Doug Green, there was nobody could touch Doug Green. <laughs> in the early 90s, mid 90s, uh, it, it, he had he had one person, Marty and Jason, that was always really good over there on Dewey Lake and still are good on Dewey Lake or anywhere. But Doug was really tough to beat. And, you know, I told Dad, I said, you know, I can't understand why I'm not catching the fish like I did down at Taylorsville. Yeah. Well, you know, that's his voice. He says, son, he said, there's a big difference. He said, this is Dewey Lake. He says, come <laughs> on. And at the time, you know, Taylorsville was, uh, was an awesome fishery. I remember. But, yeah. Um, uh, that, that, that's how I really got started into it. Awesome. Yeah. My cuff, how'd you get started? Uh, my dad, we have a little pond down by our house and, uh, my dad used to take me down there when I was four or five years old and, uh, we'd catch bluegill all the time with little pieces of hot dog. And I, one night we went down there, I was dying to go down there and, and I had a bluegill on and a bass just came up and annihilated it. And from that point on, I was hooked on bass fishing and it, it just kind of grew from there. But my dad loved night fishing, so he'd take me on a lot of those tournaments growing up when I was young, and and I'm super competitive. Like, I hate to lose, and I think I get it a lot from him. So that uh, those tournament, you know, the tournament fishing stuff just, just kind of progressed and progressed, and I, I just fell in love with it. Honestly, just obsessed with it, you know, through high school and college and 
that's you know what led me to fish led me to fish the open so but I didn't have much of a choice coming from my family you know my granddad <laughs> fished my dad fished <laughs> cousin yeah. fish, they sold boats so I really didn't have much of a choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know I know you know I, I'm jealous because like you know when I grew up when I when I went through college you know I'll never forget uh, and, and I got started, you know, dad would just take me out to the lake, you know, Paintsville Lake, like the rest of y'all. Uh, and I'll never forget, you know, I hooked one that's probably five pounds out there at Paintsville Lake on a little rooster tail one time. And that fish broke the water and threw that lure. You know, it, it, it's the chase. You know, that, that that's the great part. You guys know, the chase. you know, and always, you know, I'm sitting here strategizing. I'm sure, Doug, you drove home today. You know, I'm an ex-football coach. So in my mind, I've replayed every cast where I fished, you know, <laughs> broke it down. You guys know, we're, we're, we all have that that same obsession but i know i was a teenager and i went to mom and 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 i was like mom you know i want to go i think south carolina at the time they had a little fishing camp you know and you could go down there and hop in the boat with a few pros and i'm a teenager at the time mom's like no we're not wasting our money on that <laughs> you know <laughs> we're going to football camp so you know i went to football camp of course i played college football and that was okay and all that but you know that opportunity wasn't available then and, and i'll tell you something else that, that i think's changed and, and really helped the game of fishing is youtube you know, there's so much stuff out there. There's so much content. You know, I sit and, and you know, South Holston's new on our schedule this year. I've watched every video that every person's made. And, and Mike, do you do the same kind of stuff preparing for the Elite Series? I mean, where do you get Absolutely. your information at? I mean, YouTube has really changed the game. I tell, like, I spoke last year to high school, and I told them that that's, that's your biggest tool right there. Mm -hmm. you can learn so much there's no secret bait anymore it's it's all out there online to find out i i spend if i'm not fishing i'm watching youtube videos of old tournaments and stuff and just guys fishing on the lake that i'm going to and, and it helps tremendously i i love i love i mean i'll just get lost i'll be honest i don't watch as much tv anymore i'll get lost in youtube you know just just watching stuff uh yeah. from from all over i mean it, it's incredible and you know when when i grew up and and you know you had to jump in the boat with somebody somebody had to teach you you know so, so i feel like for somebody that's starting out fishing you know you you there's just so many opportunities to learn so much good information i mean don't get me wrong there's bad information too but mm -hmm. so we're going to take a short break real quick and, and we'll be back right after this break east kentucky tournament trail brought to you by heritage pharmacy days boat sales the fishing hole at phillips here Welcome back. Uh, glad to have Mike Huff, Elite Series Pro, Mike Jervis, and Doug Green along with us tonight. Tonight we have a, a giveaway. It's, it's sponsored by Team No Fish Tackle. Uh, that's right here in Eastern Kentucky. You can check them out. All you have to do to be entered in this giveaway is tag two friends down below and share this post, and you'll be automatically entered uh, to win this great package that, that they've given to sponsor our podcast tonight. So, you know, this segment, guys, we're, we're going to talk just a little bit about, you know, it's February. We've all set inside all winter. Uh, we've all probably been in the boat and thought about what we could catch them on. It's cold. Uh, and, and, you know, everybody's itching to go. I know for me, I always get out there way too early and I get my butt kicked, you know, uh, <laughs> thinking I can go around here and catch them, uh, because I watched Mike or somebody on TV catch them. And I'm like, Hey, I can do that right here. And you know, it just <laughs> never works out, but you know, nonetheless. So February, if you're going fishing in February, where are you going? And, and what could just the average dude that, you know, he's just trying to catch some fish. What could he catch them on? We'll start out with 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 Huff on this one. Ooh, you know, I, I would say Laurel, but it's pretty tough this time of year. I, I would honestly go to Cherokee. Um, there's multiple ways you can catch them on Cherokee this time of year. And and one of the easiest ways is just going down the bank with a, a 
you know, medium depth or a shallow running crankbait, you know, somewhere eight to 10 foot. Um, we've had some of the best days on Cherokee in February cranking and people wouldn't believe it, but you know, all, everybody said you got to do the Demiki deal. And, you know, that's just not true. You can really go down the bank and catch them good at Cherokee in February. Um, like I said, some of the best days we've had over there, those cold days, you don't even want to be out there, but you can go throw like a DT 10 or something like that and, and really catch them. Awesome. Jervis, where are you going in February? Where, where are we well, going you know, <laughs> something just, I just thought of, uh, what Mr. Huff was sitting there talking about, he was talking about Cherokee. Well, now Cherokee is a lot like, say, Cumberland. Is a lot like Del Hollow. They're reservoirs. Yeah. Uh, the re difference between a reservoir, I would think, and a lake. Reservoir is man-made, I would say, and it's a lot deeper mm -hmm. compared to a lake being like Dewey Lake, uh, Douglas Lake, something like that. Now, everybody knows that would you rather go to Cumberland and fish in the wintertime, or would you rather go to, uh, I don't know, uh, say uh, Dewey Lake or um, Douglas Lake? You know, to me, you're going to catch more fish on a reservoir in the wintertime because it's it's the fish are more built, more suited for the colder water. Am I right? Mr. Huff, I'm thinking that. Yeah, I believe that. Yep. There's, you know, they can, that deeper water they can get to if they want to and set up for the winter or, and move shallow, like, you know, good, good sized bluff walls and things like that. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. That's what, I mean, that, yep. that's where I would start. I would start with a, uh, a jig. With, with a jig, absolutely. <laughs> is, <laughs> is there another, <laughs> Is there another lure besides a jig? I mean, you know, you can swim a jig, you can uh, fish a jig slow. Fish, I mean, it's, it's the most versatile bait on the market. It's the biggest for me. It's a big fish bait, and, and you know, you can fish a small jig, uh, a finesse jig, or you can fish like one of those mop jigs and just drag it. I mean, to, that's what I would do. I would start with a jig and off on uh, points. Uh, and I would just drag it. And Huff, you got to know for the record, anybody that wins on the East Kentucky Tournament Trail, when you get to the yeah. dock, you say, hey, what'd you catch them on? Jig. Jig. <laughs> Jig. <laughs> Don't even have to ask him. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doug Green, where are you going in February? Well, like we said, I just got back minutes ago from Chickamauga, fished my first tournament in a volunteer division on the MLF uh, – big five um and i i went down a couple three or four days ago and started out with a uh black and blue jig <laughs> uh, here we go I, I was throwing the old black and blue jackham <laughs> jig by accent and <laughs> caught a couple fish and and actually posted them and uh and um i, I mean that's where i started out this year and it's been it was a very tough tournament. Water temperature forty three degrees, um, but um, threw a spinner bait a lot. Um, caught some fish on an A rig. If y'all don't know what an A rig is, uh, <laughs> you can look at YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Mike, there, I don't think he's allowed to use an a, a rig, but in the MLF and uh, all that, I think we could. They allow you to use an A rig. Um, there's different laws for them, but it is a good cold water bait. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly what the tournament was won on, and, and nobody will ever know probably other than the guy with the person. But uh, there's lots of fish to be caught in the cold weather. If you want to just tough out the time and get out there and try it, there's lots, lots of fish to be caught. So uh, it's never too cold. Uh, even though we don't like it sometimes, my shoulders and stuff are killing me from throwing an A-rig and all the weight that I had on to try to stay warm. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> other than that, um, Chickamauga just, just ended, and I go, I guess, 
I, I'm not like Mike. I don't get to head to Florida, but I, I'm headed to Gunnersville in two weeks. So, and, and you know, the one thing about those Tennessee River Lakes, Doug, and, and all you guys will attest to this, you know, you never know when, when your next cast may be, you know, seven, eight pounder. Oh, yeah. And, and, and in, any of those lakes, you can get a seven or eight. There was a 10 4 that, that locked in the big fish on the guy who won. He had a normal bag, and then he had a lunker of 10 4. So that, that puts you in a different league. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know, Mike Huff, you mentioned the Dominique, and I'll tell you a story. My first trip to Cherokee a couple of years ago, you know, we go down, and, and I think this is a mistake that a lot of people in my shoes make. Go to a new lake that I've never been to. I got on YouTube, I saw these guys tight lining or Dominique Rick, was it uh, Three yeah. Room Outdoors, or wherever the guy's got the YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, so I'm like, I'm going to go down there, and it was the year before, I think maybe the Elite Series, they caught him on the Dominique. That's how they won. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I can do this with my electronics. I can find it. Listen, I didn't, we didn't boat a fish for two days. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying like, you know, sometimes, and, and I'm sure all of you can attest to this, you know, we buy into that. And, and I think the mistake that this is what I learned from that trip to Cherokee, go fish how you fish. You yeah, know, exactly. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We don't need to make this harder than it is. You know, and, and I think a lot of people do that, you know, oh, would yeah. you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's fish watch strong for you. Yep. I asked I asked Rick Clun when I made the elite. I said, What's what's some advice? <laughs> and that's what he said. He said, Don't fish how everybody else fishes and what's won in the past. He said, fish what you're good at. Go do what you're good at. And yeah. and a couple of times I have not done that and I've got it, you know, had some rough tournaments. So absolutely. I can totally relate to that. I've been there myself. Yeah. So we're going to take another quick, quick break. We'll be right back after this break. All right, welcome back. So tonight we have our, our podcast sponsor is Team No Fish Tackle right here in Eastern Kentucky. These guys got started last year making some great stuff. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, these guys just put the, together a first-class package. You know, it looks like Tackle Warehouse or any place else that you order tackle from. Uh, so, so check those guys out. If you want to be entered into that giveaway tonight, tag two friends in the comments and share this post. And we'll use a random comment picker to select the winner, and, and we'll send this great package of jigs out to you from Team No Fish Tackle. So what we want to do in the last segment tonight was just get a little preview of the, of the schedule for the East Kentucky Tournament Trail. And, and I know I'm excited to hear Mike Huff's take on our schedule and what he thinks may be the big bags or the best tournaments that, you know, if he was fishing, he would circle. So, so we'll just kick this off. Mike, and start with you. You know, looking at our schedule, what, what are a couple events that jump out to you, maybe timing-wise, you know, et cetera? I, you know, that, that Chickamauga one could be good, but the one that I, that jumps out to me is that, uh, Douglas one, April, the April the 3rd, I believe is when it was, that could be a really good tournament because everybody knows about Douglas. They get out deep. Well, in April, they're out there somewhere in 40 foot. I've got a guy that lives there that, that says the best time to fish, you know, out deep on Douglas is believe it or not april so there could be like a mega bag like 28 you know 30 pound bag that time of year you know but uh you could also i mean a lot of guys will catch them shallow in that tournament and have you know the typical 17 to 20 pound bags i, th I think that one's got potential to be your all's best one for sure and that south holston one looks good too it just depends on the weather for that one but that's, See, that's a, gonna be fun. <laughs> South Holston's a place I've never been, you know. And from what I've watched, and and you know a lot more about it than me, it just seems like it's a lake that has a lot of fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I've uh I've only been there a couple times, but I've I've talked to some guys that you know if you hit it right and the weather's right and you can catch some really big bags. I think the the Morristown tournament goes there every year, and it takes. Some big bags to win that one. Mike Jervis, looking at the schedule, you got two or three events circled. What, which which ones jump out to you, and, and which ones do you think will take them that mega bag to win? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say Cumberland. Uh, I think Cumberland will be. Uh, I think we'll be hitting it right. I think. Uh, I mean, Yatesville, Yatesville is always uh, feast or famine. I mean, I, what was it last year? It only took, what, nine or ten pounds to win, I believe. 
But and Yatesville's been down the last two or three years. Agreed. So uh, with this bad winter, this harsh a winter, uh, if you got to remember the last two or three winters that we've had, you know, we never really had no winter. Right. Uh, and it, it seems like around here, here in Eastern Kentucky, that the worse the winter, the better the fishing in the spring and the summer. Maybe because of the shag kill. I don't know. Uh, but I think Yatesville will be good. I think Cumberland, Cumberland is always good. Uh, Douglas, just like Mr. Huff said, uh, you know, it, it's – It'd probably be one up the river. <laughs> so if if you know the route, then that will probably be, uh, like you said, that will probably be the winning stringer. Yeah. Doug Green, you got two events circled. What which ones do you do you like the most? I would have to agree with Mike. My number one would uh, would probably be Douglas. You never know what could happen out there, but there could be some huge sacks in April. Mm -hmm. um, it could be, it could just be phenomenal with the fish that could be caught out there. And like he said, <clears throat> they're going to be shallow fish caught. There's going to be deep fish caught and there's plenty of room for everybody to catch them down there. Um, uh, but I, I would say if I had to circle, the number one event would be Chickamauga. Um, there in the fall, as you well know, you know, you weighed in a 22 pound sack last year. Um, that place is just unbelievable, and there's so many different ways for you to fish, so many different ways for you to catch them, and everybody, nobody is out. In two days, three days, it don't matter. Everybody's in. It, it's that next cast that counts. So you never know what could happen. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping a bait in the water, working hard, keep your head down and going, because at that next cast could be a, a game changer or even your personal best. I'm, I'm telling you, Doug, and I, that last, last year was the first time I've been on Chick. And, you know, we, we had those two good fish in that day, lost a third one uh, that same size. I have never fished a lake, and I think I've said this on other podcasts, where I felt like within casting range of the boat, there were multiple seven, eight-pound fish. I don't know why I'm there that day, but it's crazy. It's an unbelievable place. That It's just loaded, you know. that you got that place, Gunnersville. Of course, Gunners was not on our schedule, but you've got you've got that place which is it's it's unreal. And and like like Mike said, I tell you another one. People overlook Cherokee. Mm -hmm. That's a great lake. Um, there's a lot of big fish in it, but Douglas, I think, will be our big tournament, and, and you know, for everybody to go down and have a big time. Yeah, awesome. Well, you know, I, I just want to wrap this up and say I appreciate you know all of you guys taking the time to spend a few minutes with us tonight. You know. Uh, Mike, we'd like to look, wish you the best of luck out on trail this year. I know uh, for me, I spent more time watching the lives last year than I ever have in my life. So I can promise you I'll have my Mike Huff t-shirt on and I'll be <laughs> one fan. Uh, I because, appreciate that. I mean, just for you taking the time, spending some some time with us and talking fishing. I mean, you know, I, I, I you it makes you real to me. I, I'm just saying that, you know, we can't we can't tell you how much we appreciate you. Well, thank Very you much. For me on. Yeah. Good luck, Mike, this year. I need it Absolutely. bad. Those guys are tough. <laughs> yeah. uh, Absolutely. Fine. But thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'd like to do this again for sure. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. So if you just want to bounce around real quick, anybody want to give me any shout outs to anybody that, that, that helps make it go real quick before we sign off? Got about a minute. Uh, definitely Abu Garcia and Berkeley. They, they've been with me from my first year and I, and I just, just uh, got on with Blackfish Apparel this year. They're out of uh, Minnesota, I believe. And I'm the type of person, I'm always skeptical about, you know, new rain gear and stuff. And I just got it in. It's the nicest stuff I've ever seen. So, y'all, if, if you want to give them a check, check them out. They got a website. They got some nice hoodies and stuff, too. So Awesome. Blackfish Apparel? Blackfish Apparel. Yep. Awesome. I would like to Yep. Right, I'd well, like to thank Ranger Boats and Mercury because that's what keeps me rolling. <laughs> and uh, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Marine and Accent Baits, Kessler Rods, keeps me rolling, keeps me out there. Awesome. I've got to learn that this year, you know, got behind me for some content. So uh, first time I've ever had, you know, uh, started in the green on a, on a tournament season for me. So I'm, I'm stoked about that. But uh we're going to run out of time here, so I'm going to wrap this up. You know, thanks again to all of you guys for, for taking a few minutes to spend some time with us and talk fishing. 
don't be don't forget to tag two friends, share this post, and uh, you know try to get this out there. But uh, you can join us next month. We're, we're going to try to get on as the season goes on, and you know just continue to talk fishing and try to build our sport. Thank you guys for your time. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. The East Kentucky Tournament Trail, brought to you by Heritage Pharmacy, Dave's Boat Sales, the Fishing Hole at Phillips Heat. Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? There you go. Thank you.